Uh, our first speaker today is 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 one of my favorite people in the whole world. I mean, everybody on the panel is one of my favorite people in the whole world. There's no doubt about that. But I'm going to start it off, and I'm so happy to have Ann McDonald starting off today because she's wonderful. She is warm. She's got an amazing website. She's an amazing person. And if you don't know her, get a chance to meet her and interact with her because she's a lovely, lovely lady. So, Ann, take it away. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'll take that term, lovely lady. Um, so this, I just echoing what you just said, the, the whole concept of coming off this miserable winter, what we're going to talk about today is what I use every day in my design practice, Couture Chateau. We, we approach our projects with what we call a present future mindset. And one of the biggest struggles that people have when they go into a space and they are they're trying to address it and they're trying to clear out all of their clutter is that they don't understand that all of that junk around them is essentially like building memorials to the past. And what I want you to do as you are approaching your spring cleaning is to use a present future mindset. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit, I'm going to get to my notes here, a little bit about what I call the tell. And anytime we go into a project, whether it is a design project, even if it's a business free organization project, I walk into the space and I can tell you immediately if you are kind of living and trying to order your life as it was in the past, or if you're really ready to clear out the clutter and set up hope for your future. And it's this single thing, and I want every single one of our, our listeners today, every single one of our watchers, to really to take stock of this. If you walk into your space and you look at the pictures that you have up, just take a really solid inventory. And just like when you're playing a, a game of cards or you're playing a game of poker, everybody has to tell whether they're you know, twitching their eye or they're touching their mouth or doing something. The number of pictures that you have that are five years and older will tell me and my design staff whether or not you are really living in the present with an eye towards the future or whether you are living in the present with an eye towards the past. And it's really interesting because the whole concept of mindset, you know, as we think, so shall we do. And we can talk a lot about, you know, oh, we're really excited about the future. But if we don't actually take the steps to create space for the future to come in and fill that space, it, it's just theory. It's not, it, it's not really being lived out in our daily lives. So my my first challenge to our listeners today, there are so many fantastic speakers. I'm really excited. I'm, I'm excited to hear what Julie has to say. I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to hear what everybody has to say. But before you really dive into that, I want you to check your mindset. Is your house filled with pictures from, you know, your marriage 20 years ago, or your grandparents, or your children 10 years ago, or your pets five years ago? I want you to, to clear some of that out make some empty space, and really really give yourself space for the future to come in. So that's number one, that's your tell. The second thing that I want you to do is I want you to get comfortable with empty space. You know, a lot of times we go in to organize a space and what we're really doing is we're just taking a bunch of clutter out, we set it out on a table, and then we just take that old clutter and we just reorganize it and we just put it back into the same space. And that doesn't leave room for anything new to come in. So I want you to think about creating that, that empty space or that void. And there are, there are two things that, that I challenge you to do. I've actually got them written down. And I will, um, Adam, I'll make sure that we have a PDF with these little checklists for, for the audience today. The first thing is what we call out, and the second thing is what we call date. So when you take everything out, you're going you're gonna to lay it out, whether you're cleaning out a closet, whether you're cleaning out a business, whether you're cleaning out a home. Maybe it's just as simple as a, as a child's bedroom that you want to get freshed up for the spring. 
you're going to take everything out. If you haven't used it in the past six months or the past year, then it really needs to go. And there are lots of tips and tricks. You know, everybody always talks about, you know, touch everything once. So I don't need to give you that information. But I want to share with you what we do when we go in and we refresh clients' homes for the spring. We, we go in and we have to make, we, we put a date on it. So as everything comes out, if you can't identify a specific date in the future or a specific event in the future that that thing or that pile of stuff is going to be used for, then I want you to consider getting rid of it and leaving that space empty. Is that, does that resonate with you at all, Adam? Well, it certainly resonates with me, and I'm sure it resonates with everybody else, because if you keep seeing me look down to my <laughs> left, I'm, I'm taking notes, and as I'm writing them down, I'm like, got to do that, got to do that, yep, got to do that. It's perfect. It's, it's really interesting, because the whole concept of mindset, you know, we talk a lot about mindset, whether it's in the business world or even in the design world, but until we take it into the practical and put feet on it, it doesn't help us in any way. And I see a lot of people get discouraged. You know, we're supposed to have all this hope for the spring. But what happens is we just get burdened. It's just like this heaviness that comes upon us because we can't really execute. And being able to take simple steps like changing out a picture or putting a date on something that you're going to use um, helps us move forward. And one of the saddest things to me is when people just get, get heavy under that burden. And I don't want that for people. I want people to really have hope for the future because I really do believe that the best is yet to come. You know, if, if you're still breathing, there's something that you have to do. And in, in order for you to do that, your space has to, there has to be elbow room for you to, for you to walk in and have something undone. So I really want you to get your, your head around that. So the, the, the whole concept of putting a date on it, do you, do you understand that? I mean, does that, does that resonate? Do I need to kind of expand on that a little bit? Because we have a well, whole series of steps. I mean, I'm sure that people can, uh, you know, start to, I, I, in my head, I'm already thinking like different levels of, of doing that, of the dating. Because you know, we have one area in, in the playroom for the kids. And I had set up, we went to Ikea and we bought those beautiful frames that are just like a little square. And we saw it on the wall and you put up nine frames and, we did that. We got all the frames up on the wall in a perfect nine by nine grid pattern. Looks dynamite, except we never put the kids' pictures in there. <laughs> so we have all these strangers that are in the IKEA pictures oh, up in the playroom. <laughs> And, and honest to God, it's been like that for about two years. I mean, okay, I'm so lie. I'm forcing you. I want you to put a date on it for this spring. I am going to. It's going to be, I think, a date for Wednesday. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, it, you know, one of the examples that we use when clients don't understand it is if you're cleaning out your refrigerator, you know, things have expiration dates. Well, your stuff in your life has an expiration date. And if you're not able to recycle at least a third of your stuff, either donate it, give it away, upcycle it, move it, you know, transition it kind of every three to five years, then you're being bogged down by junk in the past. And, it, you know, we, we have to make room for the future. Um, so one of the things that we always say, you know, put a date on it. You've heard the song, put a ring on it. Well, put a date on it. If you'd like yeah. to put a little date on it. If you'd like <laughs> to put a little, little date on it. That's exactly right. So yeah. I'm going to give you an example from, from my own home. Um, <laughs> from my own home. Recent, we, have a, we have a downstairs area where we do, where we throw a lot of parties and we do a lot of entertaining. And a lot of times we have leftover, whether it's paper goods or, you know, uh, party favors that we bought. And if we don't go in and check it about every three to six months, the, the stuff just amasses. And, it's, and what could be a blessing to somebody else is just this nuisance to us, and it really holds us back. And so just yesterday as I was kind of preparing for this talk and I was really thinking about what key concepts I wanted to, to share with the audience, I thought I really have to do that for my own life and I have to be specific about doing this. So 
we have three parties scheduled for this for the for the spring the end part of the spring and then on into the summer and so I went through just very methodically and and went through and thought okay this has to go this is going to be used you know May 30th this is going to be used in August and then this is going to be used in the first part of September everything else has to go so that we can leave room for what the future has to bring for us right so now let me ask you a question as you you know because it takes so much energy for people to actually like go through that process it of does. so first it you does. have to first you have to think about thinking about it right yes and you, you decide do. to really think about it and maybe yes. you think about it one more time before you commit. So let's say you commit to doing something like that. Mm -hmm. you, you said you had a lot of stuff. You have these three parties. You're an I organized do. person. Uh -huh. You're an interior designer. You're, 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 you're awesome. Your house is always clean, spotless, and everything. But there's that area of your trouble. How long did it actually take you to go through your things organize it and how did you feel after <laughs> a transparency mm -hmm. so I thought about it for about two days I actually sat and I planned I, I went to my desk and I, I I don't know if you noticed or not but I do a lot of hangouts from this space in my office mm -hmm. and I cleaned this space off behind me because I really felt convicted I had some old client projects that were you know we had old fabric samples that were up or projects that had been completed so I cleaned the space off I turned around and I faced here and I sat down with the calendar and I made a very realistic schedule for myself. Yesterday I did spend about four hours working on nothing but cleaning out all of those spaces. And I had a clipboard, no, I should have brought it with me and so you could have it available. A clipboard for each event that we have planned. And if the item couldn't go on that clipboard, I knew that it had to go. So it was four hours. It was a mess when I did it. And it was a day of just sitting, focusing at this desk behind me, really being brutal with myself. Right. And you sat there for a couple of hours. I mean, I in that one spot. Like, and then you're moving around a little bit, but you, you stuck to your task. I, I do. I get, my, I get a nice cup when, of coffee in a pretty cup. You know, and I usually like to give myself about 90 minutes. I find that your productivity really falls off if you're sitting or focusing for any more than 90 minutes. Right. Um, but the, the truth is we can say we have the mindset but if we don't put it into practice it means nothing right. true that true, true that, that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so there you go yeah um, there you, you know, go I, I'm just thinking about because so many times people ask uh, you know just people when you do things that are organized anyway they say oh you know I never get to it I, I I'm so busy I'm this I'm that and 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 it really takes the, the thinking about it and setting it down and setting your mind to do it and you know four hours it may take some people eight hours it may take people some Absolutely. two days but what I really like that you said is that you planned it you know, you thought it. about it and you set up a plan and you went to do it because I know that I've struggled in the past and I'm sure there are others out there. It's like you, you, you don't mean to start a giant organizing product. Oh, job. no, no. And then you start it and then you're like that 90 minutes in where you start to feel the fatigue oh, and you look it. around and, and you're in the middle of a, of a tornado and then you get all frustrated. <laughs> and, and then you quit. And, and, yeah, and then you quit and you end up having two messes, the original yes. mess and the new one you just created. Yes, so. and then you argue with the person next to you. Yeah. So I, I completely understand that. One of the reasons I like to talk about the whole concept of, of the tell, as I mentioned at first, is that if you can do this one thing, if you walk into your house and you can't do anything else, walk into your office, your house, look around your your public spaces and and see if you can take down some of the pictures from the past and replace even if you can replace two or three with pictures from the present that single act gets you over the hump because so often we you know in our personal spaces we build these memorials or idols to the past you know and our kids are 25 years old and we've still got pictures of them when they're two and they're you know the pictures are this big well, right. take that picture down because every time you're walking by that picture what you're really saying kind of subliminally to yourself is that well that was the those were the glory days well that's a lie your glory days are ahead of you and the glory days for your children are ahead of you or your spouse or your pets you know what whatever it is 
I, and that single action is what takes what we talk about, the present and the future mindset from this into your hands. And that can help you get past those major barriers. Yeah. Does that does that make sense? Oh, so so much. I was thinking about just actually growing up in my own house, uh, you know, with my parents, and they had a few pictures of us then when we we were kids, and actually it was our our bar mitzvah pictures, me and my brothers, and that didn't change until we were like you know 28 <laughs> years old, you know, when we started getting married and having the kids and everything. And, Correct. You know, I missed it for a minute, but then I was like, yeah, it's about time, you know, it's like update something, you know, is. They're there for over 20 years, and when they took them down, they were able to make that whole hallway so much nicer because it wasn't on that 1984, you know, wood frame. Did I just date myself? Am I that old? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, but, trust uh, me. Yeah. Trust me. I mean, think uh, about how Facebook does it. You know, even one day a week, Throwback Thursday. So right. if you thought of a seventh, one-seventh of your pictures or the things that you've kind of memorialized in your house to the past, Right. And the rest is available for today and the future. Sure. All right. Well, I got homework to do. There's no doubt about it. And I am going to try to get at least the IKEA people out by yes, Wednesday. Yes, please do. Get all the frames done. I'll have to post a picture. I'll take the IKEA people out, and then I'll have to pick out some nice pictures. I I'll can hold actually, you, you know what? I know Jennifer Ford Barry will love this. I'm going to make a project. With, uh, actually, everybody, I'm sure, will love this. But I'm going to make a project with my kids, and I'm going to let them pick the pictures that we could put up. I'll print them, cut them, blah blah blah, and uh, and I'll put up a picture just to prove that I did my homework, so I could be graded. <laughs> there All you right. go. So that's there great. You go. Okay, so listen, Anne, thank you. I mean, you know, this is why I love you so much because you speak so from the heart. You talk about truthful stuff. You talk about simple stuff. It may not be easy for people to do, but it is simple in theory. So great job. I, I appreciate it. And um, Thank you. Oh, just wonderful to thank have you. you. So for anybody that's, that's uh, you know, interested in more what Anne has to say, uh, you can find her at annemcdonald.net. Uh, she answers her emails. <laughs> she answers I do answer Facebook. my email. Yeah, she does that stuff. Um, and of course, we have, um, which I didn't mention before, all of uh, all the speakers over here, you know, we all have our websites and everything. So what we did is we've, we've put a, a, a list together um, of everybody that's on the event. And everybody has like a PDF uh, free handout that you can have. And there's also going to be special offers that they have up on their website. And uh, the list might not be complete as of right this minute, but it will be completed the next day. So click on and, and say hello to Anne and see what else she's got. All right. Yes. So Anne, I thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. Round of applause. Thank you. All right. Rapid, the world's greatest gift wrap organizer. www.rapidgiftbag.com